So today we continue from where we stopped. This will be part 19 of our complete application in ASP.NET. Sorry, let me shift my microphone. Our complete application in ASP.NET C Sharp and SQLite, uh, step by step with no step skips and with very little or no coding. And today we are now going to customize further the, the, the registration page. Now currently we have a good registration page, but the registration page has only two fields, the email and the password. We want the registration page to also contain the first name and the last name of the user. And if you want other fields, you also can do that. So I want to show you how to customize to add more fields to the registration form. As I used to say, if you are joining me for the first time, please subscribe to my channel by hitting on the subscribe button and also feel free to leave me a comment if you have any challenges following this lesson whatsoever. And if you want to support me, please do support me by buying me a coffee or support me on Patreon or in other ways. This kind of motivates me and helps me to know that there are people there who actually benefit from my uh, training or my tutorials. All right, so let's see. This we always stopped. So now, for now, we have the login page. It's not protecting anything. We're going to solve that. If I go to register, and now we have registration page has email, password, confirm password. That is not enough. We want to add a first name and last name to this registration form. And you can change this text to to log to registration if you want uh, that will help but I'm not going to do everything for you try to figure out how to um, solve some little problems here all right so um, but before we do any further customization let's just test this application let's create a user and see if actually this user created so I'm going to run this application again and I'm going to register a new user and let's just make sure that this user actually uh, got saved in the database. So I'm going to the register page and I will create a new user that is that should be me. So let's go to register and I'm creating a new user. What went wrong? <laughs> so this is very funny. Okay, so I'm creating a, a new user, Kyneton. Uh, kind son, the uh, the pro or the is pro at at yahoo.com and the password all right so I'm gonna hit on the register key and it registered so this is fine all right so I can go back to the home page of something so now I'm going to stop. Now we want to check if this user actually registered and the data is available in the database. So I'm going to go to SQLite here and I'm going to simply go to ASP Net Users and go to Edit 200 Rows. And you can see that the user is right there. So our registration and login is working. And you can see the normalized username, this username, and that is fine. But one first name and last name. So let's go do that. Okay, so the first step says um, we are going to open the application user.cs file and add two more fields. So if I go to areas and go to um, application, uh, identity data, application user, we are going to now add two fields, additional fields here. Now we have application user, which is identity user, and then I'm going to add two more fields i'm going to copy these two fields and then add it right there since i promise that there will be no coding please feel free to copy and paste so i'm going to go uh, show potential um fixes and just using system the component model that data annotation the schema so we've added two more fields to the model application user model but we also need to modify the form and also the the other the cs file so we are going to add uh, these two more fields in the register the cs html file so i'm going to copy because i will not like to waste time so i'm going to copy this and go to um let's see 
so I'm going to uh, pages and this time I'm going to register the register on that we have registered a CS HTML C sharp and here you can see that we have required email address display name and we have email we also have a password so we also need first name and last name so I'm gonna just paste so we now have um, let's see yeah we now have first name and we have last name so let me just make some room here that is one that is the second thing we do finally we need to modify on the modify the new user line to include first name and last name on the post async function okay post async function is a function that grabs the input from the from the registration form and sends it to the database through the context so if i go down to the on post async so let me just make some room here um, if I go to the on post async, so let me just uh, find this on post async, it's gonna be this one, okay? Now, once say var user is equal to new application user, username is uh, email uh, input, uh, so let's see. So I'm going to just kind of make this a little bit more readable, so let me just drop down this and drop down this and drop down this okay so now i'm going to just check what needs to be done um so i'm going to say here first name is equal to input dot first name and last name is equal to input dot last name uh yeah let's change this typo okay so new application user being being registered uh being created at registration should have first name last name and email and username of course email and username is the same is the same thing step four open the register the cs html uh, uh registration form and add two additional fields for first name and last name and we can simply duplicate the codes now in this case we are going to um, let me save everything first I'm going to close everything and now I want to provide two additional input fields in the UI for the user to enter his first name and the last name so I'm going to register the CS HTML so this is a form I'm going to expand the form let me just reduce the size of this and you can see the form group for email we have the form group for password and we can simply just add two more form groups I don't want to waste time and I also promise there will be no coding so I'm going to just simply copy these two form groups but you understand how it works I'm going to just paste it right here so we have the first name and the last name input fields okay so now if we run this application um we might have problem but let's just run it just to for curiosity to see what happens because we already have a table that doesn't have first name and last name and we are now having the application that requires first name and last name it's going to be interesting what happens so let's just run this application and see when this application runs, we're going to display, we are going to display the registration form and the registration form is expected to contain um, the first name and the last name. However, when you want to insert into the database, that will be a problem because these two fields are not available in the database. So let's see how it plays out. So if I go to registration right here, and you have first name and last name fields. So if I now register myself, and password, by the way, you can actually make the password not to be complex. So if I hit on the register key, 
I say password does not match, so I'm going to say register. All right, so this is what I expected. Now it says no column first name, meaning that the database table is screwed up. It doesn't contain these two fields and it's trying to insert into those two fields. So what it means is that we need to delete that table and recreate those tables. So that's what you should do. It's, it's, it's something that uh, it has to be done. So what I'm going to do now, according to the steps, says delete the alt my or data migration, delete the database, and add again the migration. And you can you should be able to do this. Update the database as well. So I'm going to go to the migrations uh, and delete the alts here. I'm going to delete, yes. And I'm going to delete as well the database, this one. Yes, I want to delete. And if I go to Server Explorer here, if I refresh this connection, uh, Charlie should just remove this connection. So I've thrown away my database right now. Now, when we say add migration at this time, we need to add only the migration for the alt context because the migration for the existing tables is okay. The only tables we need to update or has a problem is the tables for the authentication and authorization. So if I go to Package uh, Manager Console, I'm adding back the migration this time. It's going to pick up the new fields that we created. So I'm going to add the migration at this point. And, and the instruction says add migration, delete the database, um, uh, update the database using hospital context. Okay. Now we have added all the migration. We have, the existing migration is okay. And we have a new migration we've added. Okay, that is fine. Um, so I'm going to update the database. So I'm going to say update database context um, alt context. So I'm updating the database using the alt context. I actually should have also run it uh, in a startup is going to also work. So in this case, the database will now exist as you can see here, but it will contain only the tables for the alt, alt context and the tables. Now the user table will now contain first name and last name, but the remaining tables that has been deleted are not there. So if I go back here and add back the connection once again, so in this case, I'm going to browse for the database. It's going to be somewhere here in data. I'm going, it's going to be this one. And I say open and close. So we have it. And if I go to tables, you have this ASP that the net tables is fine. Now, if I go to ASP net users, you can see first name, last name is now there. Now, if I say update database using the existing context, that is fine. It's going to create the tables for the, for the hospital management system, that's the admission, the patient. But I want the tables to be created at startup. I want the migration to run at startup. So I'm going to run this application now and let's see what happens. So I'm going to run it. And after which we are going to come back to check that the migration actually ran and start at startup and the database was updated. As we are waiting, let me just check what the next steps are. So we have, okay, the next step will be add protected content that we are going to do next. All right, so here we are. If I now go to uh, register here, we have the registration. This is going to be fine. Um, it's gonna add so if I register now, the registration works and we have two new fields of first name and last name added. 
and also to check that when this application starts started, the migration for the existing table actually executed and those tables were created. So if I go to this place and refresh these tables now, you will see that we have all our tables just like before. At this point, I would like to stop here and I would like to start in the next part how to now protect a content so that when this application starts up, instead of showing the home page, it's going to show the login page. For now, I'd like to thank you for viewing. I'd like to also re remind you to subscribe to my channel. Support me also by buying me a coffee or on Patreon or PayPal or in any way you want to support me, that's fine. If you have challenges following, please leave me a comment. I'm going to try as much as I can to respond to all the, all the comments um, that I receive. I remain kind on the Tech Pro and I'm always there for you.